Prosecutors say the traveling nurse accused of killing six people after running a red light in Los Angeles was suffering from worsening mental health issues, had hurt herself before, and had been involuntarily committed for psychiatric treatment multiple times. Prosecutors argued in court yesterday that as a result of her mental illness, Nicole Lorraine Linton should be held pretrial without bail. Meanwhile, Linton's defense attorneys are now denying media reports that the nurse had been involved in 14 previous accidents before the August 4th crash, with one attorney calling the allegations, quote, patently false. It was the LA Times who had reported that prosecutors alleged she had been in 13 car crashes, both in and out of California, including a 2020 accident that left two cars totaled. Now, Robbie, certainly if that information isn't true, it really changes the color that was put on the story. Um, but I'm not sure substantively how much it changes kind of the gravity of uh, the, the enormity of the tragedy and why there was so much public interest in it. What do you make of it? Certainly, um, <clears throat> we should know the truth of this, but I don't, uh, if the LA, Time, the LA Times had reported that there were all those previous crashes, including the very serious one in 2020, the only information contradicting that is a statement from her attorney, which said that that was a false accusation. So it could just be that there, that maybe it was 12 crashes instead of 13, or, or there's some way in which they're creatively trying to argue, right, that it's, that's not exactly what happened. But I'm not seeing any mainstream reporting, any reporting at all, suggesting that that information was wrong. If that information was wrong, that's a, a huge screw up on the part of the LA Times and you know whoever or whoever reported it initially and should certainly be corrected. But at this stage, I don't see any reason to actually presume that it's substantively incorrect. What was the reason you know to, I mean? to believe the LA Times to begin with? It didn't offer any substantiation itself in terms of uh, you know police records or anything like that to its initial allegation, right? Because it would seem like I, the LA Times has continued to report on the story. It's reported now on the um, defense attorney's uh, statement that there weren't these previous incidents. And it would seem that the LA Times would have an investment in pushing back against this with whatever it used to substantiate its initial claim. If it had it, the absence of that pushback to me suggests, yes, a, a kind of limbo period where I don't know that I would especially believe one or the other at this time. What is also new, though, is more information. This is, again, from the LA Times about the history of mental health. Um, a quote, the defense has disclosed a number of prior incidents which appear to be increasing in severity, ranging from the defendant jumping on police cars to jumping out of apartment windows. The defense indicates that Linton has been subject to involuntary commitments on several occasions and has hurt herself more than once. I mean, that does kind of square with what we saw, with how fast the car was going. and. Uh, and, and rec it was reckless to the extreme. And also, we did have questions at the time. I know we both asked, you know, how would, did she have a license? How was she able to drive right. if she had, in fact, been in so many crashes already? And in, in fact, she should not have a license to drive. If you've been involuntarily committed, I mean, that's what they were saying there. That, so that means she was forced to be committed to a mental health facility against her will multiple times. Um, you know, that is not a scenario you, you should not be driving. Um, it, it's, it's so, so I'd, I'd like to know if she did actually have a license or, or what the, you know, we, we need to find out more about what her previous interactions with law enforcement or prosecutors were like to, you know, if we were trying to make a determination or some suggestion that they've been too lenient previously to even allow her in a situation um, to do this, of course, she could, you know she could drive without a driver's license. Some right. some people do do that, so it's it, that's not a, a guarantee that, that keeps you at bay. But uh, but um, yeah, and it's it's interesting at, at the same time. I don't know if you followed at all the very tragic death of Anne Hesh, hmm. um, who's a actress who passed away um, this week, or I, I think was taken off life life support, or, or, or is going to be taken off life support if that hasn't happened already. Yes. <clears throat> following a really horrific car crash that, that she had. And she was also someone who'd suffered from uh, serious mental illness. She had acknowledged that. She'd written about it in the past. She'd written a whole book about it. Um, uh, as she crashed her car into, I, I think, into uh, two different houses. Maybe one was her own. And really, I think, burned down um, the, the, the second home. And thankfully, no one other than her was, uh, was hurt. But, and this was also in, in, maybe not in the LA area, but in California at least. 
So it happening at virtually the same time. So it, it not that there's any you know connection whatsoever between the stories, but you know just goes to show you the um, people <laughs> with serious mental health problems should not be operating. <laughs> Well, uh, vehicles, I mean. Robbie, from a civil libertarian perspective, I'm not sure that we want to go down the road of saying everyone who has mental illness should be denied the right to have a license. I mean, obviously, there are cases where I would expect that, you know, to be a, a useful intervention, but I would expect those to be pretty limited in nature, given the large number of people who seek some kind of institutional help over the course of their their lives, and this is a conversation that obviously gets had in, among in, in the gun control context a lot, with yeah. a lot of folks arguing that, you know, having back these kind of mental health background checks will would prevent people's liberty interests in accessing firearms. And I certainly think that the right to to drive, given the economic implications of being able to get to work and things like that, on top of the less lethal, you know, um, implications of a car versus a gun would militate toward just, just wanting to be a little bit circumspect before we kind of oh, sir, say no, that the issue and here is a, mental health. Yeah, ab Absolutely. That's a great point. But being involuntarily committed is a pretty high bar. That's not like a, that's not a common occurrence for, for people, you know, just for your mundane kind of having a mental health issue or something that's, that's to be against your will, um, placed in a facility it is difficult to, it's, <laughs> this isn't, this isn't like, you know, the early 1900s where you could have any disagreeable person sent off to the, you know, the asylum and have them lobotomized or something. This is, th there are uh, real big barriers to doing that. So that's a, that's a, if, if okay. that's, once that's done to you, it's, it's, I, I, that's, that's going to filter out a lot of cases where you'd be like, Oh, no, no, this person is still fine to drive, in, in my view. I, I guess well, I the, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the one, one blew over the cuckoo's nest of it all <laughs> aside, I do, you know, I do think it matters when it happened. Obviously, people are institutionalized in part to get better, right. and I, wouldn't, I would hardly want that to be, you know, there would be a presumption of unfitness just because of that, but we, of course, will be continuing to follow this case, and we'll update you when we have more information about uh, both the mental health and criminal history uh, background of the driver of the car. That's all the time we have on that topic, but tomorrow we'll be back with more updates on the Trump Mar-a-Lago saga. And Robbie, I am glad that you're feeling better and perhaps look forward to seeing you in the studio soon. Absolutely, very soon. Thank you so much, Brianna. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any of our content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please catch us on the Plex TV app, which I keep promising I'm going to download and figure out and report back on how you do it. <laughs> Maybe today is the day. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>